Hello, in this video we're going to talk about quadratic functions. Um, we'll look at the standard form and the vertex form. We'll look at transforming between these two forms. We're going to talk about the vertex as the maximum or minimum value in this function. Uh, we'll look at short run behavior, which is where the vertex is and where the horizontal and vertical intercepts are. And we'll look at long run behavior, which means it'll either go to positive infinity if it's going up or negative infinity if it's going down. And then we'll discuss the quadratic formula, which is how we find the horizontal intercepts if the function does not factor easily. So we have a formula to do that. So let's start with standard form and vertex form. Okay, standard form and vertex form is ri are written right here. Standard form is the function ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are constant values. That means they can be any numerical value. It, they could also be zero. Um, if a has to not be zero, because if a is zero, then it's a linear function, not a quadratic formula. Okay, the vertex form is a times the parentheses x minus h squared plus k. The vertex form actually gives you a, the vertex, which is the highest or lowest value. This value h and this value k is the vertex of the parabola, which is um, the graph is called the parabola. Is the, that's the name of the graph. Okay, So we're going to look at transforming in between the two and using one form over the other if you're asked to find the vertex. Okay, so we want to be in this form if we're going to try to find the vertex because it's listed that way. So we need to be able to transform this standard form into vertex form or vice versa. If you want to do a quadratic and find the x-intercept, it's sometimes easier to be in this form. So we will do both forms and one's useful in one way and one's useful in another. All right, so to get standard form, into vertex form, we have a formula. So that formula is um, the h value of the vertex form is minus b over 2a. So this value, actually the value a is the same in both equations. And a tells you some information about the quadratic. And we'll discuss that in a minute. So, but minus b over 2a in this form gives you this value of h. Now the k value is when we plug in this minus b over 2 into the function of f of x. So if we evaluate this function or this value that we find for h, that will give us this k value here. So we just need to know what b and a are in order to find the vertex of the formula. We don't need the value of c. c in this case is the y-intercept or the horizontal, a vertical intercept. So in this fu function, c equals vertical intercept of 0 comma c. So if we have it in standard form, you should know the, the y-intercept or the vertical intercept by just looking at this constant value. We won't know that over here, we, but we will know the vertex. Now, in order for us to change the vertex formula into the standard formula, what we would want to do over here is just multiply um, x minus h squared and simplify. And that will get rid of the parentheses and we'll end up in standard form. So we're going to look at an example of each of those two types and see what we have here. So let's look at, first of all, let's look at finding the vertex from the standard form. So if we have, um, let's say we have g of x equals negative 2x squared minus 14x plus 12, and we want to find out what the vertex is. Okay, so let's say the vertex in this case is going to be um, the x value or the h value is going to be minus b, which is minus a negative 14. That's b right here. 
this is C, this is A, over 2 times A, or 2 times A, so 2 times negative 2. Okay, so we're going to end up with three negative signs, so the answer is going to be negative. And this is going to be 14 divided by 4, which is 7 halves. Okay, so my vertex is going to be 7 halves, comma, something. Now what we need to do is plug this back into the function in order to figure this out. So what we need to do is take our calculator and evaluate what 7 halves is in the function. We need to take g of 7 halves. Actually, I'm sorry, it's negative 7 halves. Negative 7 halves. We wouldn't have gotten that incorrect. So g of negative 7 halves. All right, so we would put that into our function. And we would evaluate. So we take the negative 7 halves, plug it in here, plug it in here, and evaluate this function. Well, if we do that, um, we get um, uh, let's see, I'm going to evaluate this in the function, putting in my calculator, 7 halves squared minus plus I get um, 36, so g of negative 7 halves is 36 and 1 half. So that would be my vertex. Now if I were wanting to write this in the other form, I would write g of x equals negative 2 because that's the same a value. x minus negative 7 halves, or I'd put in a plus there, squared plus 36 over 2, or 36 and 1 half, sorry, 36 and 1 half. So um, I would change this to negative 2x plus 7 halves squared plus 36 and 1 half would be my vertex form. Okay, if I wanted to find out the vertical intercept or the g of x intercept here, that's easy, it's just 12. Okay, so uh, vertical intercept equals 0, 12, because that's a C value. Now in order to find the, the x or the horizontal intercepts, I would need to either factor this or use the quadratic formula. Let's see if it factors. Hopefully this one will factor and I won't have to use the quadratic formula since I haven't shown you how to do it. So we got negative 2x squared minus 14x plus 12 and we want that to equal 0 because that's our will be our horizontal intercepts. I would factor out a negative 2 plus 7x minus 6 equals 0 and we would then take the x, let's see if here we have, our factors are 6 and 1 and 2 and 3, so this does not factor. So what we would have to do is use the quadratic formula. So um, I'm going to, when I introduce the quadratic formula, we'll come back to this one, and we'll use the quadratic formula to find the horizontal intercepts. Okay, so let's just look at what the vertical intercepts are, how we find the um, the vertex and how we write it in uh, vertex form. So now if we were to have, for example, we want to write an equation from some information here. So if we wanted an equation of a graph, let's say, or an equation, let's say we have, we know the vertex, here's my second example, write equation of quadratic given um, uh, 5, 6 is our um, vertex and 
the curve passes through um, 3, negative 2. OK. So let's look at this and see how we would do that. Well, we would be able to write most of the equation in vertex form um, by, by knowing the vertex. So we would know, if we were writing f of x here as our function, we would know in vertex form, we would know these two values. That's 5 and 6. So we would have most of the function already. If x is 5, k is 6. So we would have this as our function. The only value we wouldn't have is how wide the function goes and which direction it goes by knowing what a is. So what we would need to do is take this point that we know it passes through and figure out what a is. So in this case we know a y value and an x value that happens. We know an f of x value here. That's negative 2. It's given to us in this point. We know an x value for that which is 3 for that point. So we can figure out what a is by evaluating this equation and figure out what a is and then we'd have our equation of our curve, our quadratic. So in this case um, this is negative 2 squared is 4 so this would be 4a plus 6 equals negative 2. We'd subtract 6 so we get negative 8 equals 4a and a is negative 2. So our function here would be um, negative 2 parentheses x minus 5 squared plus 6. Now if we wanted to write this in standard form, this is vertex form, if they requested it in standard form, or if I requested it in standard form, then what we have to do is we have to multiply this out. So if we take this function here and we multiply this out, so if we're writing it in standard form, we would my first step would be to write this out as if it was a problem without a square. And we would do this part first. We'd multiply this out. Multiplication is commutative. We can multiply by negative 2 after. So I would take this and we'd do this FOIL on this part because this means we have 2x minus 5s. So I would multiply that out and I would get x squared Outside is negative 5x, inside is negative 5x, so we get negative 10x for the outside inside. And then we'd have a negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25. And then we have a this plus 6. Okay, and then we multiply by negative 2, and we get negative 2x squared plus uh, 20x minus 50 plus 6. So my equation in standard form would be negative 2x squared plus 20x minus 44. So this would be my equation in standard form and this is the same equation in vertex form. So 1 gives me the vertex right off the bat. This one will allow me to solve with the quadratic formula and find the horizontal intercepts easier than this one would. And we'll get to that in a future of this video. Okay, let's move on. So we've done these two things. We transformed between the two forms and we've written it in both forms and I've given you some information about the forms. All right. Now the vertex is the maximum and minimum value. That means in a graph, these all, so the graph of a quadratic. function is a parabola and a parabola has symmetry it either looks like a u going up or it looks like a u going down now this depends on the a value in your formula so if a is greater than 0 that means it's positive it's going to look like this and if a is less than 0 negative then it's going to look like this. So if we have an a that's negative, then it's going to have a maximum value. 
if we have an A that's positive, then we're going to have a minimum value. So looking back at this problem that we had in the previous page, we had a negative here for A right here, negative. So that means that this, the, the vertex, which we had here, which is this one, so if it's negative, it goes downward. So this is a maximum value of the graph. 36 and 1 half is the maximum, the biggest value of that graph at negative 7, 1 half. And so same thing here. This had a negative 2. So this is a maximum value. The 6 is the vertex 5, 6. So that's a maximum value on the, on the graph. Okay, so if we know what A is, the first value on the x squared, then we know whether it goes up or down. So basically we're looking at this value right here, the a value, or we're looking at this a value right here. So one of those will tell us whether it goes up or down. Now we know we went over finding the vertical and horizontal intercepts already. Um, we now know that if we have an a value that's positive, then we're going to go to positive infinity on both sides on long run behavior. Okay. So if we know, for example, um, we have a function f of x equals um, 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, then we're going to know that the long run behavior on this is that this is going to go up like this because of the 3 here. It's positive. So that means as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to infinity. That's this side over here. Okay, as x goes to negative infinity, f of x is also going to go to infinity because it goes up on both sides. On this side over here, it goes up as well. So if we have a 3 there, we know what the function is doing as it goes on right and left. If we had a, a function that had a negative value, 16x squared minus 2x plus 1, so if we had this value, this is negative 16. So that's going to tell us the long run behavior is going to go down. It's going to go like this. So that means as x goes to infinity, that's this side, we're going to have a, a, a f of x or the y value is going to go to negative infinity. And the same thing happens on the other side. It goes down on this side as well. So on a parabola, it's either going to go up on both sides or down on both sides. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Um, we talked about short run behavior already. We, we're going to move on to that and get to the quadratic formula. So these are going to find the short run behavior, so parts of the short run behavior. So the short run behavior is the vertical intercepts, the horizontal intercepts, and the vertex. Okay. This will give us our horizontal intercepts. So we're going to go back to the problem that I was working on originally, which is this problem. We're going to look at this problem in terms of um, the quadratic formula. So we have negative 2x squared minus 14x plus 12. So g of x equals negative 2x squared minus 14x plus 12. So that was our function. And we're going to find our horizontal intercepts. Those are from the quadratic formula. Okay, and then we're going to do an example down here that I already have. So let's move my example down so that I can do the quadratic formula on this part. Okay, so up here we have a, a an equation. We're going to use that. We're going to find our horizontal or x-intercepts on this equation. All right, so here's the thing. We're going to do minus b, then we have plus or minus. So that gives us our two answers. Um, b squared minus 4ac is under the square root. That means we need to multiply here and then subtract, or we square first. Multiply square, then we subtract those two numbers, and then we take the square root of that whole answer. Now, if this is negative, we don't have any horizontal intercepts. 
That means the function is either above or below the x-axis and going in the opposite direction. So we may not cross the x-axis or have any horizontal intercepts if this is negative. Otherwise, we're going to have two. Or if this is zero, then we're just going to the the graph's going to come down and just touch it once. So you have you have three opportunities here. You have three different choices on this quadratic formula. We can have the graph be up here and not have any. That's when this part is not defined. We can have it touch, just barely touches and goes once. That's when this is zero and then we have plus or minus zero so we only get one answer. And then we can have it where it crosses twice. That means that, that this is a, comes out to be a whole number here or a number that we can take the square root of, a positive number and then it'll cross twice. So there's three different options on this. So let's look at what this one does. Maybe it crosses, maybe it doesn't. So we have the a, b, and c values. We're gonna plug it into the function. This is a, this is b, this is c. Okay, so we're gonna take our x thing here. We're gonna go minus a negative 14. That's b, plus or minus the square root of negative 14 squared minus four times a negative 2 times c, which is 12, all over 2a. So that's 2 times negative 2. Now, um, looking at this, this is going to be a positive number because you're squaring it, and this is going to be a positive number because that's two negatives, so that's going to be, so this is going to have two answers because we're going to have two positive answers added together here. So we will get two answers on this one. So let's work this out. That's positive 14. Okay, and then we have 14 squared, which is 196. And this is gonna be plus, we're gonna have eight times 12, which is 96. Eight times 12. Okay, and then we're gonna have negative four on the bottom. Okay. So we're going to take this um, 196 and add 96 and get 292. 292 over negative 4. Okay, and then we're going to take the square root of 292, which is not a nice number. So if we were going to do approximations, if I'm going to switch this to an approximate answer, then it's going to be 14 plus or minus 17.088 uh, over negative 4. If I were going to leave it as an exact answer, I would need to factor 292 and see if we have any perfect squares in there. Um, so 292 divides by um, 4. So 14 plus or minus 4, or the square root of 4 times 73. Um, Seventy-three looks like it's a prime number. Um, I don't think it divides by anything. So that means if I were going to keep this as an exact answer, this is equal to an exact answer, then we're going to get um, 14 plus or minus 2 square root of 73 over negative 4. And then we would separate that out into two answers. Oh, we reduce here. We can reduce. Four, 2 goes into all of them, so that's 7 plus or minus square root of 73 over negative 2. And then we write this as two different answers. It would be 7 plus the square root of 73 over negative 2, or... 7 minus the square root of 73 over negative 2. Those are our two answers exactly. Now if we were approximating, then what we would do here is just we'd take our 14 and we'd add our 17. 17.088 um, and then we divide it by negative 4 and get uh, approximately 7.77, um, 7.77, I'm sorry, negative 7.77, or 
we take our 14 minus 17.088 and then we divide that by negative 4 and we get or um, we get an x value of 0.77 okay so that means our ordered pairs here would be negative 7.77 comma 0 and 0.77 comma 0 it's rounding to two decimal places that's where it would cross now these are the exact values for the x if we didn't want that to happen if we wanted exact values all right okay now we're going to apply this to some problems here so we're going to break that up into uh, some problems here let's start with this one this is part came out of your book um, this was number um, 28 in your textbook in this section it says the ball is thrown in the air its height is this quadratic function it wants you to answer three questions here what height was ball thrown okay that's when t equals zero now, how high is it this is the vertex and when does it hit the ground that's going to be an x-intercept or a vertical intercept okay so we'd have basically we have three different things that we have to do here okay all right so let's look at the first thing t is zero height when it was thrown that's basically the that's actually the horizontal intercept also and we said the horizontal intercept is eight here well we could if you put zero in here this is zero this is zero so it would be eight so part a would be eight um, meters okay so eight meters because we're dealing with meters okay and it's a height so it's eight meters for a b um, how high is it okay so what we need to do is find the vertex so we're going to do the the first value we're going to find the h by going minus b over two times a okay we're going to work this out that would be approximately it doesn't come out nicely approximately um, positive 2.45 if we went to two decimal places okay if we went three let's go three because that's standard in the book 2.449 okay and then that's the um, time this is the time um, that's in seconds uh, when the ball reaches the highest peak Okay, how high is it above that? We need to put that value into the function, h of 2.449 into the function. So that we have the actual height when it happens. Okay, so if we plug that in to the function, um four four nine squared plus twenty four times I get thirty seven approximately thirty seven point three nine feet or meters. So that's two decimal places. Since we had rounded to three already, then we'd have to round down one more each time we do this, because it will incur some error. Now it's the so that's how high it's going to be above the ground at its peak. It took 2.449 seconds. That gives us our h value. That's at the t value in this case. And if we want the height, the the h of t value then we plug that h of t in there and figure out what it is all right and then the last thing here is when does the ball hit the ground we need to find the intercept so we're going to use the quadratic formula here x equals minus b 
So minus 24 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. Okay, so we took a, b, and c out of the function. Negative 4.9 is a, b is 24, and c is 8, and we put it in the quadratic function, or the quadratic formula. Now, um, we're going to have, um, okay, so this graph, all right, we know that it crosses through 8 up here. We know that it goes down because it's negative 4.9. So that means it has to go like this. And we know that it goes up to 20 something. So it goes like this. So we're looking for this point right here on the graph. We won't want the negative one because there's going to be a negative one in this. So if we know the bottom is um, 4.9 times 2, we know that's negative 9.8. So that means we don't have to do both of these. I'm, a, I'm going to um, say that we, since the bottom's negative, we want the top to be negative also. And the only way this is going to be negative is probably if we use the negative sign here. So let's figure out what this is. But I don't think we're going to need to do both. So 24 squared minus um, 4 times negative 4.9 times is uh, the square root of 732.8. Now if we take the square root of that, I get 27. So negative 24. We're not going to use a positive one because that's going to give us a positive answer on the top and a negative answer. So that's going to give us this answer. So we're going to use the minus only. Uh, 27.07. If we round to two places, um, if we round to three places, it's still zero there. So negative 9.8. So we're going to figure that out. Um, um, I add negative 24 to negative 27. I get negative 51.070 over negative 9.8. Okay, and we divide. And we get 5.2. 5.2. So 5.2 is the um, how many seconds it takes to reach the ground. So 5.2 seconds here. After we travel 5.2 seconds, we reach the ground. 5.21 if you go to do two decimal places. Okay, so that's using the quadratic formula to find an x-intercept. Okay, I'm going to do another video that has some more applications on it, but I'll, I'm going to place it on another video so it's not as long. So that's going over all of the things here listed.